But I got to talk a little bit about Hawaii. I've been on the phone with the governor coming up here and the senators. And, uh, and let, let me say, address that devastating wildfires, some of which are still burning in Hawaii. They've claimed the lives of 99 people so far, and they haven't cleaned things up yet. The deadliest wildfire in more than 100 years. A whole city destroyed. Generations of Native Hawaiian history turned into ruin. I've spoken to Governor Josh Green multiple times and reassured him the state will have everything it needs from the federal government. I immediately approved the governor's request for an expedited major disaster declaration. That's a fancy word of saying whatever you need, you're going to get. And that'll get aid into the hands of people who desperately need it, who have lost their loved ones, who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, who have been damaged and destroyed. And think about this. All that area they got to plow up, they can't do it now because they don't know how many bodies are there. They don't know what's left. Imagine being a mom or dad, wondering where your child is. Imagine being a husband or wife, a mother or father. It's really tough stuff. Almost 500 federal personnel have been deployed to Maui to help communities and survivors get back on their feet. FEMA search and rescue teams are sifting through the ashes in that five-mile area that you've seen on television has been burned. It's painstaking work. It takes time. It's nerve-wracking. Most of the debris can't be removed until it's done. My wife, Jill, and I are going to travel to Hawaii as soon as we can. That's what I've been talking to the governor about. I don't want to get in the way. I've been to too many disaster areas. But I want to go make sure we got everything they need. I want to be sure we don't disrupt the ongoing recovery efforts. FEMA Administrator Griswold, who's the best we ever had, I think, was on the ground this weekend. I just talked to her. She's back in the States. I have directed her to uh, streamline the process as quickly as possible to help register survivors for immediate federal assistance without delay. To date, FEMA has approved 50,000 meals, 75,000 liters, liters of water, 500 beds, 10,000 blankets, and as well as other shelter supplies for survivors displaced from their homes. FEMA also authorized one-time payments of $700 per household to folks who have been displaced so they can do the immediate things of just taking care of medications and prescriptions that they so badly need. We're working with the state to make sure survivors that have lost their homes have a place to call home until we can rebuild. We're also surging federal personnel of the state to help the brave firefighters and first responders, many of whom lost their own homes, their properties, while they're out busting their neck to save other people. How many have still been so impacted themselves, but they're still working around the clock to put the fires out, evacuate survivors to safety and find the missing? I've ordered all available federal assets on the island to assist local crews, including the U.S. Coast Guard, the Navy Third Fleet, and the U.S. Army. In the immediate aftermath, the Coast Guard and Navy supported maritime searches and rescue operations. The Army helicopters uh, help fire suppression and efforts on the Big Island because there's still some burning on the Big Island, not the one, that, not the one where you, you see on television all the time. FEMA has deployed more than 140 urban search and rescue personnel as well. And there's so many organizations to thank, like the American Red Cross, helping survivors, missing loved ones, cell phone providers, making sure first responders can make and respond to emergency calls, commercial airlines that have evacuated tens of thousands of people from the island. The list goes on. And the Small Business Administration has dozens of staff on the island and has begun making low-interest federal disaster loans available to Hawaii, Hawaii businesses, homeowners and renters, and nonprofits to help them begin to rebuild just to get by for the immediate near term. And we're going to coordinate and continue to coordinate relentlessly with the people on the ground to make sure the critical work continues.